Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, and this, of course, is my channel, Barnon 11970 And as always, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch my video. And uh, we're going to drop some learning on you today. We're going to get some information, and you're going to learn a lot of things. And I know some people are going to look at the title and seem a little confused, but bear with me. It will make sense, and it will explain everything and even the purpose of this video. Now, for those of you who've watched my videos before, you know when I get something interesting, they tend to be a little long. So this is going to be one of those. If you don't have the whole time, I suggest stop it now, watch it later, and uh, watch the whole thing when you have the time. And even if you're new, you know, I promise you, by the time this video is over, you're going to be thinking of things in all new perspectives. So please bear with me. And I always ask to help to get this information out. If you feel this stuff is relevant and helpful and beneficial to people, Please share it, like it, favorite, post it on your social networks. Help me to get this out because the kind of information I'm going to be talking about, you're not going to hear in schools. You're not going to be hearing on the radio. You're not going to hear it on the television. So I need your help. So with that being said, let's get into it. Um, for those of you who have been watching my channel before, and especially recently, I've been talking about expansion of the mind, how you can increase your intelligence, how you can make your brain start working better, how I've been downloading kind of information. And the reason I can say that, I use the word download, because it's almost like I could be just sitting here minding my own business, and the next thing I know, a whole bunch of information gets in my brain. Now, it's almost like, for example, if you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm hungry, and you just think that in your head, well, it's not visions, it's not anything like that, it's just that all of a sudden things get, what I feel like saying, downloaded into my brain. So, it all started today, actually no, I can go further than that, it's, it started yesterday. The last video I made, it's about the um, Leaf in the Wind, which was um, by one of my subscribers, I think it's Brad, no name or last name, I forget, so please I forget, forgive me if I say it wrong, but um, he made this incredible comment that I made into a video yesterday. So check it out. It's the only one I did with the leaf. So that will be it. But then I started on the way to work today. I started thinking about it on a deeper level. So let's get into it a little bit about how everything in the universe is connected. Let's just start with that leaf. It just seems to be just an ordinary thing. Now, of course, you know, they eventually die, they fall to the ground. And then you think, well, that leaf has separated from the tree. Well, in visible light spectrum, that is absolutely true, because you cannot see other forms of energy. You can only see the visible light, which is probably 3% or less of all the light spectrums that we know of. So universally speaking, we are blind. So the world basically kind of teach you, teaches you, well, you know, I got to see it to believe it. In other words, they're trying to program you into thinking, well, if you can't see it, then it's probably not there. And I'll disprove that right now. Please, somebody point anywhere on the screen where you see oxygen. You know, tell me what, what oxygen looks like. Have you ever seen it? Have you ever touched oxygen? I mean, you do all the time, but you'd never know it. You know, have you ever tasted it? I mean, unless you've had that oxygen mask on you, I'm talking. But the point of the matter is, just because you can't see oxygen doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So... Seeing is believing is nice, but not everything has to be seen, and not anything should ever be believed, and we'll get into that. So, with that being said, when I was driving to work today, and I'm talking about, I'm thinking about that video with the leaf connected to the tree, and it separates. Now, because, like I said, you cannot actually see the ultraviolets, the radio waves, all these different frequencies, that leaf is still connected to that tree, just not via physical touch. And we'll get into physical too, because that doesn't really exist. Let's get into that a little bit first before we get further into it. This is, this is going to kind of go over the place, but everything's going to make sense, so please bear with me. There is no such thing as physical. Physicality is an illusion based on spectrums of light and vibration, vibrational energy. We could even get into religion with this. And if you have a Bible, I want you to open it up and look at it. You'll, you'll see the first thing they say is, at first there was the word. Now, it wasn't all of a sudden there was nothing, and then all of a sudden you hear somebody scream, ah, like that. What they're saying is, a word, like what I'm speaking and what you're hearing right now, is nothing more than vibration that creates a sound. 
your ear takes in that vibration and registers it as a language that you can understand or understand is the really the word you want to use. So when they say at first there was the word, what they're saying is at first there was vibration, there was energy. It was a spectrum of energy vibrating. Some of it is damaging and some of it is beautiful. I mean, if somebody takes nails on a chalkboard and scratches down a chalkboard, it's going to make you shudder. I mean, just think of it, it could affect you. Now, if somebody scratches their nail on a chalkboard, it's not physically hurting you, but that screeching sound disrupts your magnetic field and puts you in dis-ease or disease. So you first start with the word, which is vibration. And then it says that God is the light of the world. Well, again, think of it scientifically. What is light? Light is energy. It's vibration. Now, when I talk about the illusion of solid, you're talking about, like, for example, this copper bar feels very solid. Well, just like my skin that's holding it, just like the copper in it, the air around it, everything is made of the same thing, which is atoms. Atoms are made of particles of light. So this right here looks solid, but if you put it under a microscope and go further and further down into the deeper layers of the structure of this copper or the structure of this skin or the structure of the air, you would need different spectrums um, spectrums of light in the telescopes to do this, but you would go down to the size of an atom, which is what these are made of. Everything is made of atoms, which is light. So the slower the vibration of that energy, the more solid it appears. Now, what makes it slow down? Because you'll see, and you can check this, this is simple science. When you look at the air, you could walk through the air. See, I'm brave. I'm moving my hands through air right now. You could see light go through a window. Well, the light coming from the sun is energy. That's light. You have the molecules that create the glass, but you can't go through it, but light can. So the reason that that happens and the reason why it condenses is think of it this way. Let's say whatever room you're in, whether you're in your car or you're in your house or whatever, let's just say you're in your bedroom and it's pretty, it's absolutely empty. Now, one person can move around anywhere they want. They can run around, they can spin around, they can jump up and down, they can move all over the place, they can run as fast or as slow as they want. It basically depends on what you want to do. You can tumble around, you can spin around, you can do whatever you want. Add another person, they can do the same thing. Add another person, they can do the same thing. Eventually, the more people you add, the less you'll be able to move. Now, just imagine if you filled that room to capacity of people, stacked all the way on each other, everybody's like this, and they can't really move. Well, the empty room, the, the empty room with nobody in it, there's plenty of room to move everywhere. The more people you add, and if you um, replace people from molecules, the more tensely condensed they are, the less they can move. So an empty room looks open. Crammed with people, it looks more of a solid entity. So if you think of that instead of people and you use it as the molecules, the atoms, the more atoms that are in something, the more they condense and then they can't vibrate very, they can't move all over the place. So something like this copper, it appears so solid because the molecules that make this copper are so tightly condensed that it slows down their vibration and they, they barely twitch. Illusion of solid. Now air has the same molecules as are in this copper bar. But the difference is those molecules are all over the place. They are free to move wherever they want. So it allows it to move as fast as it wants. So the more space, the more the energy vibrates, the faster it will go because the speed of light is 186,400 miles per second. So the further they get to Rome, the more speed you have. So solid is an illusion. So when you're talking about the leaf, we'll get back to that. The leaf has a certain amount of molecules. The twig that it fell from has a certain amount of molecules. The air in between has a certain amount of molecules, but they are all interconnected with each other. So it did not fall and become different and no longer a tree. It fell down and spread apart. Now, let me explain how that will make more sense, because as he said in the breakdown,
Think of it this way. You have the leaf that fell from the tree. If you reverse it, you're going to have the leaf connected to the twig, which is connected to the branch, which is connected to the tree trunk, which is connected to the earth. The earth is connected to our solar system. Our solar system is connected to our uni uh, or to our um, solar system is to our galaxy. Our galaxy is part of the universe. It keeps expanding. Now, if you think about it, the tree was created because of the energy it gets from the sun and the earth. So as above, so below. It gets nutrients from the ground where it gets whatever from the soil, but it also gets rainwater and also sunlight. So it's getting energy from both the ground and the air. So basically, North Pole, South Pole, creating a torrent which can create life. That is why we have our own torrents. It's located in our heart. It creates a magnetic field around our body. You have the North Pole and you have the South Pole, which is the bottom of your feet. That's why you have so many ner nerve endings on the bottom of your feet. Now, the way you could prove this is if you take somebody and stand face to face and you get closer and closer and closer. And then at a certain point when they're standing right in front of you, you actually will literally feel uncomfortable. It will almost feel like if these are two magnets and you try and push them together, you feel that how they push off each other. Well, what's happening is your magnetic field is pushing against their magnetic field. They're actually touching and they're pushing off each other. So you literally feel it. So it's not some superstition. It's not some emotion. It's actual physical science. You just cannot see just like you cannot see the ozone layer on our planet. It might have a different spectrum of color. But that's just like a rainbow. It's just different spectrums of light. So the tree is created from the earth and from the sky. Now, what? how do planets form? Well, planets form from the explosion of a star. So when a star explodes, all the debris start going out. And over time, they start cooling and uh, magnets... Um, the magnetation of the world of the universe, because everything is magnetism and energy, starts forming it into spheres, and they over time cool down and become planets. Now, how do galaxies get formed? Well, galaxies are an accumulation of stars. How did the universe get formed? Well, they talk about the Big Bang theory, so they're talking about explosions. So think of it. The universe was created supposedly from the word. So in other words, there was vibration. It caused energy to start spreading apart. And that created galaxies. That created planets. That created the trees and other things on the planet, which helped to maintain life on the planet for people and other life. So everything is cre created from another form of it. It's just being pushed apart and separated. In other words, it's like you going on vacation. You're going from where you live, where you're comfortable, and you're venturing out. So if you think of it from a standpoint of God not being a bearded man sitting on a cloud, but a singular vibration consciousness that wants to, for some reason, experience everything, well, it's going to create everything and spread it out. And as you conceive new ideas... New things are created, thus creating an infinite universe. Now, we're going to take belief out of this because belief is re relevant. Now, when it comes to proving how you can turn something s solid from nothing, it's very simple. Because every single thing that's ever been created by us, for example, has been starting out as an idea. So, at first... You don't think of the idea. So technically there is nothing. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, there is information that gets downloaded into your brain because your brain does not create thought because everything in the universe has already been created. So you have to think of it like you're a transceiver because, for example, if you turn on a radio and you hear music playing, there isn't that band in the radio or that woman or man in the radio talking to you, it's picking up a signal that's out in the universe. If you're looking at this on wireless internet, you're not connected, but in a way you are, the World Wide Web. That's why they talk about the web of space. That's why inside your brain, if you look at your nerves and your neurons under a certain types of spectrum of light under a microscope, it will look like outer space because of the fact it's all connected. You just cannot see it. So seeing is not always believing. Well, actually, seeing is believing, but belief is irrelevant. So um, 
when you're talking about how everything is created, it's created from something else. So everything comes from vibration. Everything comes from energy. Everything comes from light and magnetism starts to hold it together. So the further and further apart, it's nothing more than an experience trying to see itself. So when you create something, first, there's nothing. Like if you ever seen the never ending story, you know, what's trying to destroy it, the nothing, because what they're saying is as long as people have ideas, the land of Fantasia is created. So the more people thought, the more they created that universe, which is more true than you think. So what destroys the universe? Well, nothing. When people stop dreaming and stop thinking, in other words, you're no longer creating the universe because actual science is proven. And you could watch people like um, Haseem Narasim, I forget how his name is pronounced, but you'll, you'll know it. I'll write it down. I'll find it for you. But people like Greg Braden and other scientists have proven that through your emotion, you can change the universe. What they discovered, I think it was a Russian scientist. I don't know his name. I'm not going to have everything. So it, I'm basically going to show you the path. You got to travel it. So what they found is, is they wanted to see what the universe was made of. In other words, is space empty? In other words, you don't see nothing but black. Does that mean there's nothing there? So for the longest time, science said, well, you know, space is empty, you know, the emptiness of space. Well, it's the furthest from the truth. You just, again, can't see it. See, seeing is believing, so you believe it's empty. So what they did was they took a tube and they created a vacuum in that tube. In other words, what they think they did was to suck everything out of it, suck all the air out. So they think, well, I guess if we look at it in different spectrums of light through our telescopes, there should be nothing there. Well, to their surprise or lack of surprise, I'm not sure. When they looked at that tube that was supposedly a vacuum, which means just like um, replicating outer space, they found millions of particles of light scattered all over this, this tube. So what they found is that even in space, in vacuums of what seems to be empty, there is actually millions, if not trillions, who knows, of particles of light scattered all over the place. So the next experiment is, they wanted to see what if DNA, and don't ask me who comes up with these ideas, but they came up with an idea saying, what if we put a strand of human DNA into that vacuum? Would something happen? Now, of course, you know we're made of DNA. Everything is created by DNA, which is different strands forming into like the Jacob, Jacob's ladder, you know, up to the heavens. And it creates every living and non-living thing in the universe. It's basically chains of code. So, they put the DNA into this vacuum and they, what they discovered was, is all of the molecules of light attracted to that DNA and connected itself to it. So they found that the human DNA can affect the world around you that you cannot see. Well, they also wanted to see, well, what would happen with DNA? And you, again, watch people like Greg Braden. He's talked about this before that your emotions can influence your DNA strands. In other words, when you're in times of stress, your DNA stretches. When you are calm or happy, stress-free, your DNA relaxes. So depending on your mood, the DNA in you, which is your creation, you will contract or condense. In other words, stretch or relax. So your emotions do that. And there's a reason why on the television and all around the world, you're being scared to death all the time. We'll, we'll get into that later. Again, like I said, this is going to be a long video. So what they wanted to find out next was what happens if we take that DNA out of that tube? Will everything just go back to being random? And what they found is when they removed the DNA from that tube, all of the molecules that once were scattered all over the place still maintained the shape as if the DNA strand was still there. So what they found is that your DNA influences the molecules that create up that create the universe. And your mood contracts or relaxes your DNA, which is what you're made of. So in other words, you have control over the physical world. Because again, there is no physical. It's just different vibrations of spectrums of light. So with that being said, 
there is more scientific evidence that you could check on, and I highly recommend. Don't believe me. No. Knowledge is power. That when you observe the universe, when you just by the very sake of observation, you are changing the pattern of the energy. Now, it either goes from waveform or particle. I'm not a rocket scientist, so I don't have it all. I'm just teaching the basics to make you get curious enough to want to continue to research it, but not too much information where it's so, you know, how's like somebody like that, like Greg Braden and them, they might talk about so much sciencey stuff, you'll just not understand it and then you'll, you'll not want to listen. So I'm keeping it basic. So for the people that know a lot more than me, just understand that uh, this is, this is education 101. So just by observing the universe, you are creating it as you go along. Your emotions control your DNA, which controls the universe. So in other words, you create your world as you go, just based on observation. You get everything based on how you feel. Now, this is how we're all controlled, because the universe is all about doing whatever you want. I've made a video about this, about think about your life like God giving you the tools to create a uni uh, your own amusement park. And you could build whatever you want because it's your park. You can have anybody visit. So right now, anybody watching this video is like coming to my amusement park so they can do whatever rides I've created. Now, I can have all fun rides. I can have all scary rides. I can have a few rides and a lot of spectacle stuff. I can have a few rides and a lot of food. It depends. But if, if I, for example, build an amusement park where there's nothing but scary things happening, I can continue to ride it and complain, but I'll still feel that sensation, or I can change it, or I can never use it again. Basically, what's happening is because you create your own universe, you have control of everything. You're just taught all of your life that you cannot believe in yourself, because like they say, there is no I in team. Well, I'm going to prove how that's wrong, um, but we'll get into that later. So basically, when it comes to creating your own universe... Everything is based on your consent. So, if you ever saw the movie Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, there's a part in the movie where Luke Skywalker is going to visit Yoda. And you could watch this just so you could see this stuff. Yoda is supposed to be that little green guy, you know, the little Jedi Master, for those who may have never heard of Star Wars before. If you haven't, I don't know where you've been. So, it ends up, he goes there, he crash lands into a swamp. He finds Yoda and he says, you know, I want to be trained on how to use the Force. So one of the things after a while he, train, he tries to train Luke to, Luke to do, Luke, tries to do Luke to do, is to use his Force, his mind control, to lift the X-Wing fighter, which is a rocket ship, out of the water and onto dry land. So basically Luke is saying, you know, I can't do that, it's too big. So Yoda, being about two feet tall, and Luke is about six feet tall, somewhere around there, you know, Yoda goes to him, judge me by my size, do you? In other words, he's trying to tell you that size does not matter, which is actually kind of funny because when you think of it in a sexual term, they're always talking about size does matter. Well, what is, the, you know, size does matter. What is the world made of? Matter. Size matter. So Luke tries to do what he says, and that's unlearn what you have learned. In other words, what they've programmed all your life is based on a belief system. So Luke says, all right, I'll give it a shot. Uh, you know, No, he says, uh, no. Uh, he's, um, what does he say? He says, all right, I'll give it a try. And Yoda says, no, there is no try. It's uh, do or do not. There is no try. In other words, either you believe you do something or you don't believe you do something. There is no try. So that's what they mean by that. In other words, do it and it'll get done. Or if you believe then it won't because you're not sure. So Luke says, all right, you know, I'll try it. But he doesn't really believe that he can do it. He doesn't know. Well, he doesn't know he can do it. So he goes and he tries to lift it up and he's using his force and you see it lift up just a little bit. And Yoda's eyes are wide up and say, wow, it looks like he might be doing it. And then all of a sudden he says he gets too tired and it falls down deeper into the water. So Luke gets tired. He sits down next to Yoda and says, I can't do it. And, he's, and then Yoda's trying to convince him that you have to unlearn what you've learned. And he's Luke is complaining it's just too big. 
And basically what Yoda tries to teach him is he grabs him by the shoulder and says, luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. So what he's saying is the physical has nothing to do with the fact that we are light beings. So your belief system is telling you, well, telling Luke that he can't lift that because it looks big. But it's just nothing more than the same atoms that make up this tiny little thing. He just believes, because the belief system is a form of control, that he can't lift it up. So Yoda finally decides as, you know, because he's trying, Yoda's trying to convince him and Luke gets frustrated. He says, you know what, you're asking the impossible and starts walking away. In other words, his belief system is so strong that no matter what Yoda says to him, he's not going to comprehend it. So he walks away. So Yoda's kind of like, all right, I got to show him. So Yoda closes his eyes, sticks his hands out, and guess what? The ship ends up floating in the air, coming down and landing on gr the ground. And Luke turns around amazed and says, I don't believe it. And Yoda says, and that's why you fail. Because he had to teach Luke to understand that since we are light beings and everything is made of light, lighter than air, anything can be moved but it's based on a belief system. So we, when we come to this third dimensional planet or fourth dimensional planet, whichever way you want to think of it, because if you add time, it adds another dimension, but you're adding a, uh, what appears to be a very solid world and you're taught a belief system. You teach it in religion, you're taught it in school where everything is based on belief. Beliefs can be influenced. So because of the fact that you're a light being and you're moving something that is nothing more than energy, when Yoda did it, he didn't believe it. He knew what the what it was, so he could lift it. It's like in the Matrix when he's um, I don't have a spoon, but he tells Neo, "Don't bend the spoon. That's impossible." But remember, basically, that there is no spoon. In other words, this is the physical image that's in your brain, and it's nothing more than light particles. So all you're doing is, is is bending the image, and the appearance of it bending happens. That's what he means by there is no spoon. He's telling you that's all in your head. So um, that's why, for example, like I said, you create your own universe. It's inside you. Well, look at some of the words that they use. Well, if I'm going to drop some knowledge on you, like I said, I'm going to teach you some information. In form mation. In form and formation. You know, what's a formation? It's creating, inner. That's why if you're smart, you get insight, inner sight. It's all in the wording. That's why a lot of very smart words have the letter I in it. They're trying to teach you that it's all about I, like IQ, the insight, intelligence, wisdom, information, brilliance, bright. You know, you're very bright. Well, what else is very bright? How about a star? When you're brilliant, you ever see anyone talk about that in space? Oh, the stars, they're, they're shining so bright. They're so brilliant. And then you look at things like the word tele, like intellivision or intelligence. I wrote a couple of things down. It comes from the definition of distant, uh, transmission over distance. And it also means from the Greek, origin from Greek, which is telos, which also means the end or complete. So when you are talking about creating your own universe, because it goes by based by your emotion and you, your DNA is affecting the world around you, which is your atoms and your emotions control your DNA, what they're saying, and also the fact that you're just by observing the spectrum of light, it changes from particles to waves and all over the place. It changes the physical reality of universe. You could do whatever you want, but it's based on a belief system. And that's why whether you're right or you're wrong, you're right. Because like, for example, I'll give you an example of the trolls that come to my channel. There are some people that hate me with a passion and they'll try and do whatever they can to discredit me. Now, they have a belief system. Their belief is I'm evil and they're coming here to try and stop me from promoting my lies, my Satanism and all the stuff that they like to say. Well, if that's what they believe, then they're in their minds, it's true. Now, there are going to be plenty of people that come here and say, you know what, this person gives me information that resonates with me. I like what it sounds like. I agree with it. I'm familiar with it. So you're right as well. So it's a matter of perception. So um, 
I mean, I'll give you a prime example of per perfection, of uh, perception. Do you know you can make yourself bulletproof without using any single thing? The reason for that is it's all about your thought process. Now, like they say that there is no spoon. Well, if somebody takes a gun and shoots it at you, you're going to get shot. But if you put your, not, so you don't want to get yourself in a position to say, well, I'm bulletproof, a bullet can't touch me by saying, okay, take a gun, shoot it at me, and it won't go through because of course it will. But if you change your, your concept of saying, well, instead of me trying to stop a bullet, which is impossible, if I make sure I'm never anywhere near where a gun is, well, then I can't get shot. And that would make me bulletproof, wouldn't it? So for example, if you decide to join the military and the military ends up going to war and you decide, well, it's just my job or I have to, you decide to go, well, you're increasing your chances of being shot. But if I'm a peaceful person and I don't want any part of a war, that decreases my chances of being shot. In other words, it's your perception. So when people say things, when I said the other day about making your own amusement park and creating your own universe, they say, oh, well, what about all the death and destruction? What about Genghis Khan? Well, if you decided to join him, well, you're going to be in his amusement park doing his rides. If you walk away from it, you're not part of it. So, for example, if you knew Genghis Khan was coming to the town near you, because let's say you heard that he is a couple of cities away, and he, every city he goes, he kills all the people or takes them with him, and you hear that he's on his way, well, if you stay there, most likely you're either going to become a slave or you're going to be dead. So if you continue to move away from where he is, it never affects you. So in other words, you can't control the outside because technically there is no outside, but you can control what you do on the inside. So I can technically say I am bulletproof because what I will do is make sure I will never be in a place where there are guns that I could be shot with. That's why I will not join the army. That's why I will not go to a shooting range. That's why I will not go up to some gang members and say, hey, you're a punk ass, you know what? Because they might say, oh yeah, <laughs> you're dead. So it's all about the concept. You create your own world. So when somebody doesn't like me, for example, that's their belief system, but it creates it. To, and so it makes it to be true. So it's on either side of the spectrum. There is no right. There is no wrong. But here's how you're influenced. We're influenced by the television, the tell a vision or tele, which is transmission over a distance or end or complete vision. So they're telling you how to feel. That is why when you watch the television or read the newspaper or listen to the radio, you're always hearing about scary things. There's always some terrorist, like Isis, for example, which is funny because Isis is a god in Egyptian uh, folklore. But yet they want you to not think about Isis in that way. You're talking about Al-Qaeda. You're talking about all the different terrorists. You think, you think about 9-11. You think about people getting raped, people getting murdered. The cops are going to be unfair beating people. In other words, they are saying... The world is a maze. You could travel any way you want. And what they do without telling you is they switch the, the walls all around you without you noticing it. So you think you're traveling it, your free will. They're guiding you in the direction they want you to go. So in other words, the illuminated people, it always comes back to light, doesn't it? When you are um, full of this wisdom and knowledge, one of the things they say is you are enlightened. Well, in light, enlightened, your love is lifting me higher. In other words, they're saying, raise your vibration. Because what happens is you have more room to move, more room to breathe. You are enlightened. You become lighter than air. You become light, enlightened, illuminated. So these people, they understand the power. So there is, you know, like they say, power of suggestion where you can be a person that knows this and you you can actually take advantage of people and manipulate people based on influence because people will believe what they're told if they're told it by enough people. Tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. So you'll have these illuminated people that are corrupted with power. Because just imagine, for example, if, because I'm a massage therapist. Let's say, for example, I was doing massages on women and I knew that I could influence their feelings based on the fact that I can control my own universe. Well, that could make somebody very power hungry, couldn't it? 
thinking, wow, I can actually turn this person on without them knowing just based on the fact that I can create my own universe, which can create hormones and pheromones. And all of a sudden this person may think about how good this feels and something else is happening. Now, of course, I don't do that, but you could see it from a person's perspective of power that they realize, wait a minute, I know how the universe really works. I create my own universe so I can take advantage of the weak minded people and influence them to do things for me. And they think it's the free will of them doing it themselves, just doing their job. So that can corrupt, can corrupt somebody. So these few people at the top that have all this information easily influence the world because who runs the education system? I mean, who actually says what and can, what can and cannot be in the education department? Well, that's the government. Who says what can and cannot be on the television? Well, that would be the government. Who says what can and not can be in your food, in your medicines? See what I mean? They control everything. So this way, you think you are, on your own free will, going wherever you want, but they're nudging you in certain directions. Because when you are in fear, when you are angry, when you are scared, depressed, all of those other lower vibrational mo uh, moves, you are lowering your vibration, making you appear more solid. That's why you feel so heavy. When you're stressed out, you feel very heavy. And that's why when you get stress off of you, you say, wow, feels like I got a whole bunch of weight off my shoulders. It's not a coincidence. You become lighter. You become floating in air. When you're so ecstatic, you're floating on air. See the words when you hear them in perspective? But that's why they're always teaching you. Well, you got to be grounded. You know, you got to hang tough. You got to stay grounded. In other words, stay low, stay in a lower vibration, which makes you more solid, and we can control you more. Because when you are an enlightened being, uh, an enlightened sentiel, you end up uncontrollable because you know you control your own universe and it's based on consent. So they cannot, you know, how they say the Illuminati say they have to tell you what they're doing before they do it because it's a code of ethics. It's a little bit more different than that. What they basically say is they realize that everybody it's, it has free will, which means they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. But if they can trick you into doing something and think you thought it up, well, you've consented to where they're steering you. So if you want to believe that the, the Ebola virus is going to come kill you, if you believe that mosquitoes are going to get you sick, if you believe there's a war around the corner, then you are going to create that actual universe and it's them steering you in that direction. It's nothing more than an illusion. That's why in row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 in other words, be happy, life is but a dream. It's a fantasy world. It's made of light. And that's why, for example, if you've ever seen the movie Labyrinth, it's a Jim Henson movie. Well, to give a nutshell, the and spoiler alert, the princess girl, the hero, the girl, convinces the goblin king to steal her baby. Because she was so frustrated with him, she didn't want the baby anymore. So she says all these things, gives him the consent to come and take this baby. But he, she didn't take it seriously. It ends up, he really does take the baby and takes it back to her castle. And she finds out she has to go through this maze and find a way to free her baby. And the whole time, she's basically consenting to this. Because he said, well, you're going to have to go through my maze and you have whatever amount of hours of time to do it. And the walls in the maze change and all these different illusions happen and all this other stuff. Long story short, she eventually gets there. And you know how she defeats the evil person? And I always thought when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that was such a stupid ending. She didn't shoot him. He didn't blow up. There's no explosions. She just turned around and said, you have no power over me. In other words, and what happened was the Goblin King, oh, no, the one weakness, and he fades away. And she's back home with the baby. It's all about consent. And when she said, you have no power over me, what she said is, I'm taking back my consent. I am no longer allowing you to create my world through my own consent. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Now that could mean man's law or even God's law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So you, if you don't want to understand or understand that you have been given the ability to create whatever universe you want, your own amusement park, you, God loves you so much that he can even make you not believe you have it. So if you sit there rolling your eyes and thinking it's crazy, you've created a belief system. That belief system turns into your reality. So if you believe that that's nonsense, well, you're right. 
because you've created that reality and everything around you will surround yourself with that kind of situation because everything is energy and magnetism. So if you sit here saying, rolling your eyes and say, oh, that's crazy. God would never do that. Well, you've created a belief system, your DNA, and through the actual sight of your eyes, you are actually creating your environment. So everything is based on magnetism, everything will, that will pull around you and you will have other people all around you say, yeah, that's so stupid. And yeah, that's garbage. And yeah, you're right. So what they're doing is, is they are making your belief system seem like it's genuine. And on the opposite spectrum, there'll be somebody watching this say, oh my God, I've been waiting for this all my life, and this is what I believe in, and I resonate with it. Well, guess what? Now, all of a sudden, you're going to have a positive energy in that sense, and everything around you is going to confirm your belief. So if you've created a belief system. So whether you believe in this or not believe in this, you are right, and you will have everything around you confirming that fact, because you create your own universe. And what the evilest people out there do is they take advantage of people who don't know who they are. Because like I said, there's a lot of eyes when it comes to intelligence. Intelligence that has an eye. If wisdom, in other words, eye, always inside, or maybe this kind of eye. That's why you see the Illuminati has an eye in the center. They're trying to tell you where it's coming from. It's coming from your vision because you create your environment. Now, you'll see things like insight, intelligence, and observation. Still, They all have eyes in them. Now, one that doesn't have eyes is smart. Now, I'm going to show you where the eye is. Here's the word smart. And this is a box of donuts, which will show the whole thing and why I even got into this. Here's the word smart. Now, look at the A. What do you see right there? So right there, I know it's not meant to be taken seriously, but there you go. The eye is hidden, hidden in plain sight. Now, how did I get about the box of donuts? Because that's what this story is all about. Now, when I was driving to work today, I had from 11.30 in the morning through 4.30 in the afternoon, nonstop massages. So I wasn't going to be able to get a break. I didn't eat. Normally I drive and I eat something on the way, especially if I'm going to be busy. And as I am driving, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to have time to eat. I hope there's going to be, I hope maybe they leave some snacks or something so I can eat something in between doing massages because I'm not going to have time for a lunch break. And lo and behold, my 1130 appointment who comes in every week, she's been coming to me. She says, old, elderly Chinese woman, nice woman, but, uh, you know, whatever. She ends up, she's been coming to me for like, God, 12 years. And one other time she brought me donuts, but I come in and she's like, I got a box of donuts for you. Now think of it from the perspective of what I've been talking about. I was driving in my car. I'm creating a thought which creates from and from nothing comes a thought, comes something on a tangible level. So what my very thought was is created the thought that I am hungry. I hope somebody brings food. Now, this box of donuts did not just magically appear in her hand. So she had to go and get them, which means that she had prior knowledge or instantaneous knowledge for some urge to go buy me donuts. Now, in the 12 years or so that she's been coming to me, this is the second time she did it. So is it a coincidence? If that's what you want to believe, then you are right. And you will find other things that will confirm that. But if you realize that you create your own universe and that your thoughts actually create an, uh, create an energy pattern, which at, travels at the speed of light, which is 186,400 miles per second, the very thought of creating something creates an image. And that's why there is no past. There is no present. There is no future. It's all here. So remember when I was saying before about your brain being a receiver? Everything in the universe is already there. You just perceive it. It downloads into your brain. You think your brain and you're taught that your brain creates these things. That's just like saying when you turn on the TV, the newscaster that you're watching on your TV is actually in there. See, I'm not in your computer right now. You know, you know let me out. No, but you're seeing an image of it. It's an electrical light image of me. It's not me. So it's the same thing with your brain. You think, oh, when I think of something, that means my brain actually made it up. No, it extracted it from the universe when it was necessary, and it came down into your brain, and that's where the image went from nothing, drawn out of the universe, into your brain, became a thought, that thought became a creation. Because if you look at it, for example, like a DVD, when you have a DVD, the entire movie is on that DVD. Well, you'll have... The part you're watching, that's the present. The part you've already watched, that's the past. And the parts you have yet to see is the future. But 
it's already all on that DVD, which means you can rewind and you could fast forward and you could pause and you can come back later. You can do whatever you want because the entire history of that movie from beginning to end is all on that disc. And if you want to watch it all over again, you can. If you want to speed it up, you can. So that's what life is all about. Everything is in creation. So if everything's in creation, how can there be a past, present, or future when that's part of everything? Part of your, your past, if you're thinking about something you did when you were five, that just means another tar part of the universe is where that is. And the same thing with the future. That's why people can't read future. They're reading one of an infinite amount of futures. The only way future comes true is if you don't do anything to change it. In other words, you give consent. So, for example, if I say I'm going to hit you in the head with this tuning fork and I can use it as a prophecy, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to predict your future. I'm going to hit you with this tuning fork. Well, if you sit there and say, oh, that's crazy. I don't believe it. Next thing you know, it hits you in the head. Well, that prophecy came true. Well, if you leave the room or you keep me from hitting you, well, you've changed the future. In other words, you took the possibility of this through your consent hitting you in the head, you decided not to consent. In other words, you have no power over me and you moved away or you took it out of their hand or you kept them from hitting you. So in other words, in an infinite possibility of a, an infinite universe, it's nothing more than deciding which road I feel like traveling on. And people watching this, we're connected. We're all connected. It's all things that you cannot see. So let's talk about, for example, you know, they talk about trying to get you conformed. It's all about you being tricked into giving your consent to someone else. So the Illuminati cannot control you unless you allow them to. These other beings, these wealthy people, people or whether you think they're aliens or whatever you want to think, the only way they can tr get your slavery, so to speak, is if they trick you to think that you are already a slave because that's what they tell you. So you make that belief system and you actually will find all the different things that you will confirm to that. So if you think you're a slave and you think you're part of Satan and all these things, you're going to be attracted and all of a sudden you're going to see videos on all those things. You're going to have people talking about, oh, how you're a slave. You're going to watch Alex Jones and Lindsay Williams and all the fear porn. So what's happening is it's giving confirmation of your belief, which strengthens that belief, which makes you further into control. Instead of realizing you're a being of light, you're a child of God, you're nothing more than vibration that's condensing and depending on your emotions will make you lifted or and relaxed or lowered and stretched out so whatever you want to believe is what you're going to create so if you want to believe that the world is going to end guess what my friends you are going to ultimately create a universe where the people in your amusement park will all of a sudden blow up and because there's an infinite universe of an infinite amount of views there are infinite amount of possibilities so if that's the belief system you want then don't complain that all of a sudden you're going to notice this World War III. And that's why I, I've said in my videos, and I'll keep saying it because I control my universe, I control what I perceive, well, there is never going to be World War III. And like, for example, when they talk about religion, religion teaches you a belief system. In other words, they're programming you to think that you are separated from God and that Everything is God's will. In other words, take the responsibility from yourself and will control you. So if you're good, if you're a good little slave and do what you're told and give us your money and give us your faith and allow us to do whatever we want and all you have to do is just forgive us, you know, you'll be rewarded when you die by going to heaven. And if you don't do what we do, in other words, if you try and stop us or you try and not give us money or you, you try and not do what we're, we tell you to, our man-made laws, well, you're going to go to a place that's full of hell, it's full of fire and brimstone, and there's a guy with horns and a pitchfork who's going to stab you for the rest of eternity. Well, if that's what you want to believe, then you're going to see that. You're going to see very religious videos. You're going to be attracted to them because it's all about attraction. You're going to have plenty of friends that are going to say the same things. In other words, you're creating your universe through your belief system based on what other people have told you. You take it as an exception because it sounds right. And all of a sudden, magnetism pulls everything in that goes with that system. And that's why, for example, even in relationships, you ever have a friend or yourself or something, they always have the same pattern. They're always dating the same guy or the same girl. They go from one to the other It's because they don't realize it's a choice and they keep going with what they're familiar with. Because when, you, when you're familiar with something, even if it's bad, you tend to be more safe around it. You feel more secure because you're used to it. People don't like to know that in an infinite universe, you have an infinite amount of choice because that means it requires work and effort and going from belief to truth. So this whole system 
is based on the fact that smart people, Illuminati's, illuminated people, light beings, enlightened people who are so power hungry because they can see the influence that they have over, over people so they can get whatever they want and not have to lift a finger because they enjoy watching other people do it, thinking they're running around doing just their job. So if you're in the military and you decide to kill somebody and kill a bunch of children, even if it's accidental, well, the only reason that happened is because you decided to join and you decided to follow that order. So it's a matter of choice. You can blame it on other people. You can blame it on other situations. But if you weren't in the military, guess what? You wouldn't have been able to shoot anybody. Well, you talk about people getting pepper sprayed and shot in riots. Well, if you decide to create your own destiny and you create your own universe that gives you the belief that I should go down and protest like at Ferguson, and all of a sudden a cop shoots you or pepper sprays you, well, it's your fault for being there. If you would have never been there, they would have never shot you shot in you. They would have never shot you, or they would have never pepper sprayed you. So you're creating your environment. So like I said before, I'm bulletproof. Not that I can't be shot. It's I, I have decided that I don't want to ever be near a gun. So if I'm never near a gun, I can't be shot, thus making me bulletproof. You have to think in a, in a different way. There is no spoon. So if you have a spoon, and again, this isn't a spoon, I know that, but if you think I'm going to try and bend this, I'm trying to bend something that doesn't really exist. That's impossible. But if I realize it's just light, I can bend it. I just haven't learned to really to do that, so you're not going to see this bend. So, you know, no magic tricks. So again, that's my belief system. I don't think I can do it. And that's why when I used to even talk about the lottery tickets. Now, I used to win, and I still win all the time. I've won $500 at least three times, $300 once, 250 two or three times, $100 I've won probably 70, 80 times. $50 over a couple of hundred times. Now, here's the thing. There will be people that will believe I can do it. So they'll see these same things and there'll be people that'll think it's crazy. Either both of them is right because it depends on your belief system. So when I go to play the lottery, I don't go in saying, I hope I'll win or I'm going to pray that I win or, oh, I wish I win. I go in with the concept of saying, I create my own universe. I am going to win. Now, the reason it doesn't work all the time is because my belief system is still based on the fact, well, you can't win them all, which means I can win five, six, seven, eight times in a row. And then all of a sudden I'll have this thing of, well, you know, can it go on forever? So what I've done is created a belief system. And then all of a sudden, is it any wonder why I start losing again? And that's when I stop, regather my thoughts. So whether you believe it or not is irrelevant because it's based on your perception and your magnetism based on the control of your universe. So this is what I'm talking about. I mean, if you think about light beings and we go back to the religion and everything like that, when you think about the devil and everything they want to train you, they've taught you to make you believe that the number 666 is the number of Satan. Well, I want people to look up what carbon is. Well, because if you ever seen any space movie or anything like that, they'll always call us carbon units because we're made mostly of carbon. Well, if you look at the molecular structure of carbon, there are six protons six neutrons and six electrons. 666, number of the beast. We're the beast. That's who they're referring to. And that's why when you talk about religious aspect and the belief system, you believe because of what you're told. In other words, they're influencing your belief system. So you create that universe that you believe that God created Adam, ripped out one of his ribs, and all of a sudden a female came out from that Adam. If that's what you want to believe, that somebody actually did that, then you're going to discover all these different television programs and all these different shows and other people that are going to confirm your belief. But if you see it as nothing more than a science book where you know that most people, you ever notice the smartest people, the people that try and help us in this world tend to get shot? At least that's what they make you think because that's what their belief system is trying to make you get convinced of. But basically in this belief system, you, you'll see that the most good people in the world have been assassinated. In other words, people that are trying to spread good. Well, if you know or believe you're going to be assassinated from giving some kind of information and you still want to get it out there, well, you're not going to give it point blank. You're going to make a story. You're going to make it a movie. You're going to make it a song. You're going to make it into something that the dumb people will see as entertainment and the smart people to see as a message to decode, just like in war. Well, if you have the Japanese here in World War II and you have the Americans here in World War II and they have information that they want to send to each other's troops, well, they have to make it encoded messages because if they can understand the regular message, they're going to know your plans. 
So let's say the Americans over here have a certain code, the Japanese over here have a certain code, then all of a sudden the Americans come and capture some of the Japanese and they get some of their coded messages. Well, if they can't decipher them, then it doesn't matter what those messages say. If you don't understand them, that information is worthless. So it's all about decoding. So if people want to believe movies, books, newspaper articles, YouTube videos, all these things have hidden, hidden messages. If you want to believe they don't have them, you're absolutely right because that's what you're going to believe and it doesn't matter what somebody shows you, you're going to reject, reject it based on your belief. Or if you do believe in it, all of a sudden you're going to see all these different things that show these things. It's all about decoding the message. So if you look at the Bible for the creationism in Genesis, the book of Revelations, you're talking about the fact that they wanted to name something very similar to what they're talking about. So since we're made of atoms, which is nothing more than light, that's why in the Bible it says, first there was the word, which is energy condensed. And it says, God is the light of the world. We are made in God's image. In other words, God is light coming from a vibration. We are vibration. So we are made of God. In other words, everything is the universe. Everything is one. One is all. All is one. So they wanted to teach molecular structure. So since our bodies are made of atoms, what's the best name to name the character in that story? Well, they named him Adam. And they're not physically removing a rib because if you look, when we're first conceived, it's a solid single cell. And a sperm comes along, enters that egg, and fertilizes it, and what happens? It starts to split. And you see right here? That's a vesica Pisces. Right here basically. It's two circles and you have this like this kind of shape around it. It's basically, if you look, I'm not trying to promote Dunkin' Donuts, but that's a vesica Pisces. Now, if you see this, that's an obsolisk or an obelisk. I don't know how it's pronounced. You see that all over Egyptian times. You see it all over the Americas. You see it even the uh, Vatican in Rome. Well, that's a phallic symbol. It's supposed to be a penis. This right here is supposed to represent the womb of a female. So if you ever see the Washington Monument, you will see this penis-like structure over a vesica Pisces. You will also see in the Vatican, you know, that looks like the keyhole. That's what they're trying to tell you. That's why there's an obelisk in the center of the Vatican over a vesica Pisces. Well, how do you have sex? Why do you think when they, when they, build, when they build a building, they're erecting a building? Well, what is erecting a building? It's going straight up. Well, if you're in a good mood, guess what? You have an erection. And they're always trying to tell you that size matters. Size matter. What is everything made of? Matter. So they're trying to tell you size matters. In other words, like when Luke Skywalker couldn't lift up that ship, it was because he said it's too big. Judge me by my size, do you? Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. They're trying to tell you. And that's why even in the first movie, Star Wars, when they're trying to go to Princess Leia's home world and they're in the Millennium Falcon heading towards there and um, Ben Kenobi's trying to teach Luke Skywalker with his lightsaber to hit that little ball that's flowing around and shooting a laser at him. He's doing a good job until he puts the blinder down. And Luke goes, "How you know, with the blinder down, how am I supposed to fight? And Ben Kenobi goes to him, don't trust your eyes. Your eyes will deceive you. In other words, just because you see something doesn't mean it happens. And that's why you will see things on the television that if you want to believe that 9-11 happened the way they told you, well, you're going to have a belief system and they are able to, able to control you. If you realize that you have control over your own life, you're all of a sudden going to start getting information that discredits that information. So whatever you decide to believe is the universe you will create. So in a nutshell, you can believe this video. You can not believe this video. You can know it to be true. You can hope it to be true. You can say that you you can create your own amusement park, or you say that's utterly ridiculous. Guess what? You're all right. So I'm not here to tell you how to think, because I can't. I am showing you a message, because if you're here, and you've listened this far, then you came here because you had some kind of question, and something brought you here. Something told you that instead of eating your bag of potato chips or going out with your friends and drinking a couple of beers or watching that sporting event, you decided, you know what, let me go on YouTube and see what's on there. And then all of a sudden you found this video. So in other words, there was nothing. First there was nothing. Then came the word. And then came the light. And then came God. See what I'm talking about? It's all about I. And that's why they don't want you in an individual. And that's why they say there's no 
you know, I in team. Well, again, like I showed you in the word smart, if you look at the A, there's an I hidden in that. So yes, they can control you. That's why it's easy to control the masses because they believe they're right. All they're doing is put you, putting you in a maze and saying you're free to walk wherever you want. But they'll change the walls ahead of you before you even notice it. So you think you're walking that maze and saying, oh, I choose. Well, I can go left or I can go right. Well, if they block off the left, then even if you go that way, you can't go any further. You have to come back. So all they're doing is changing the pattern and making you think with the illusion of choice that you are going in your own direction when they are steering you in that direction because you give them that through your consent. So if you want to watch TV, you want to be distracted by the entertainment and pornography and sporting events and the latest gossip, well, that's the kind of life you're going to lead and you're not going to be happy. And that's why the people that hate on me, you tend to see they're very angry. They never have any videos that are uplifting or educational. They're not doing anything positive. Well, if that's the choice and that's the kind of roller coaster rides they want, where you go to their amusement park and every ride has been shut down, and the people that run it are like, well, what are you complaining about? It's $80 to get in. What do you mean? You don't? There's no rides. You're here because we tell you to. You're lucky to be here. Where's my $80? Now go into the amusement park and we'll throw rocks at you. Oh, please don't leave. Don't leave me. I'm afraid. And that's why I could say about trolls and people always say, well, why do you keep talking about them? Well, because of the fact you have to face your fears to be able to understand them. And this is why I can happily say my trolls are afraid of me. Not physically, but that's because they are afraid of me in the sense that I am what they are not. And all you have to do is every single troll that you know that hates me go on their YouTube channel. They're not trying to do better videos than me. They're not trying to give an alternate view of inspiration or anything positive. They hardly do anything but hate because that's what their world is. That's what their belief system is, that I have to hate somebody. It's a choice. It's a choice they made. But guess what? They're not living the happy life. So instead of them partying or doing something that brings them joy, they're creating hate and wonder why they're so angry or their life isn't the way they want. It's all a choice. You create your world. So that's basically it in a nutshell. If you've watched to this point, you're going to understand a lot of things in a different way. Or you can choose to say, this is a bunch of BS. Shut it off. Give it a thumbs down and go on your way. But you, uh, you came here for a reason. We are all connected. So it even boils down to that leaf that it's all connected. It all comes from something else. It was once singularity, like the Big Bang Theory, and then it's spread out. Because that's the only way God can experience everything. It becomes everything. And the more creations that happen, and the more consciousness that is aware, because light is consciousness, people don't seem to understand that because it doesn't seem to make sense to them. But light is what where our thoughts come from. Light, actual electricity, is what creates our movement. What creates that? What creates our thoughts? It comes from nothing. First there was the darkness, and then there was the light. In other words, it started out with nothing, then there was a vibration of an idea, then it becomes a concept, and then you actually make it into a product. This tuning fork was once somebody's thought in their head. And before it was a thought in their head, it did not exist. So their very thoughts created this physical, what appears to be, physical thing. So go create, go create your own universe. Make it happy. Don't sit there and think you have to consent to what somebody else tells you just because it's scary. That's like you watching a TV show and there's a scary monster that's all of a sudden telling you on the TV screen, you need to go send me a million dollars. You could just turn off the channel or say, I'm not sending you a million dollars. What are you going to do? You're on a TV screen. Or you would say, oh my God, I'm afraid. I better send them the million dollars. Well, whose choice was it to do that? If I tell you to jump off a bridge... Whether I trick you, convince you, threaten you, or whatever, if you're the one that volunteers to jump off that bridge, who gets damaged, you or me? It's all about responsibility and taking it. So if people think about, oh, why are there wars? There are wars because people decide to fight them, because they're just doing their job or just doing what they're told. The people that start the wars are never the ones that fight them. So the high elitist people who are bored or need more money or just to thin the herd, they create a situation that makes you guys go and fight. And they'll use patriotism to make you think it's worth dying for. Well, if you go there and kill somebody, you've chosen to be a murderer. If you get shot, 
Well, you put yourself in harm's way. You're no longer bulletproof, but it's based on your choice. So if all of a sudden these elitist bastards wanted to start a war and everybody said, you know what? Nope, not going to do it. How would they have that war? If both sides' armies decided to say, here's my gun, I'm out. Where's the war? It's all about choice. It's all about responsibility. So people always want to point the finger everywhere else because they want it on the outside. And that's what religion teaches you. God is out there. He loves you unconditionally, but he'll judge you for everything that you do. In other words, he's, they're trying to teach you that you are separate from the universe, that you are a separate entity. And just because the space in between me and you is empty, well, you think it's empty, that it means we're not connected. Well, all you have to do is look at the neurons in your brain, and you'll see that the neurons that you can't see with the naked eye, when they have certain spectrum telescopes or, or microscopes, you can see that it's all connected like a web. Well, if you do that with outer space, you could see the same thing. That's why the internet, it's the World Wide Web. Look for the internet in wherever your room is. If you have a Wi-Fi right now, show me where that information's coming from. Do you see that information going into your computer? Does that mean it's not there because you can't see it? Oh, I guess seeing is believing. So I guess there is no such thing as the internet. Then please explain to me how you're seeing this right now. What about your thoughts? When all of a sudden you start thinking about some ex-girlfriend. And I'll tell you right now, right there. Some guys that are watching this right now, as soon as I said that, an image of an ex-girlfriend went in their head. So in other words, you just created an actual perfect image of some girl that you once thought about. And it was first nothing, and then I presented an idea. And that's how easy it is. I'll show you. Hopefully you're not driving, but if you're in your house, close your eyes and picture a dog. Now, how many of you pictured a dog? Well, guess what? My influence created your universe based through your consent. So you could have said, no, I don't want to think of a dog or screw him. I don't want to close my eyes. That's how easy it is. But to the people who closed their eyes and pictured a dog, guess what? My power of my influence controlled your physical world because physical is nothing more than spectrum of light. And even though you thought it in your head, you still were influenced and I changed the maze. So all of these trolls have to understand that I have the personality that if they talk to me, this is where, why they're afraid of me, because they will make fun of me, they will be anonymous, but they will never talk to me on the phone, or they will never talk to me on video, they'll never show their faces. Why? Because I can guarantee you, if they talk to me, we would be friends. But they don't want that illusion to change, so they stay at a distance. That's fear. So I control them because all they can do is thumb down my video, which you'll see plenty of those. You'll see people, they can make fun of me. They can do all these things, but they do it hiding. I'll give you an example of, of, uh, of these haters, two of them, the news unit and New York critic. Now you'll see probably New York critic has made comments. He does it all the time, even though I blocked him. Now at one time I used to be on with Corey C, Eric, I don't know if you know him, and New York Critic, we were all on a show, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, we used to call it. And while we were talking, we were friends. Because when I talked to them, I could, um, he, we had no problem with them. But when I stopped talking to them and they didn't do the videos anymore, all of a sudden the New York Critic just started hating me for really no apparent reason other than the fact he doesn't like what I think about, what I talk about. So in other words, he doesn't like my amusement park. So what he does is instead of creating his own amusement park, he visits mine and complains about the rides. That's like, you know, being an adult and you go to a kiddie park and you're complaining, oh, God, there's no big roller coasters and there's only these children things and I don't want my face painted and this is stupid and God, I guess I, I'll come here tomorrow and I'll pay the $100 and even though it's going to make me broke, I guess I got to keep coming back here and I got to show how much I hate it. So I'm going to go to this amusement park and I'm going to tell them, oh, I hate you, amusement park. And I'm the owner of the amusement park. He goes up and, you know what? I hate your amusement park. I don't like it. Even though I come here every week and spend all this money, which you take, I hate your park. And I'll sit there and say, you hate my park? Okay, but I uh, thanks for the uh, $80 that you keep paying to come here. Thanks for your admission. Thanks for helping to fill up my amusement park. So you're sitting here complaining, and yet you're here. And the same thing with the news unit. When we used to talk on the phone, man to man, we were friendly. We were civil. When we stopped doing it, all of a sudden he started hating me again. So I, I can make a challenge to any troll out there. I guarantee you, this is the power I have over my influence of my universe. Any troll out there, 
that wants to do a video chat where we are face to face alone, just you and I, not bringing all your po your posse, all your tribe and all your haters, just me one on one. I guarantee you by the end of that conversation, hate it as you will, you will like me. You will not think of me the same way. But because you choose to push that away and keep that from happening based on fear, you can keep your belief system alive. So that's why I talk about this stuff, because it's all about understanding or inner standing. That's why I have insight. I have control over my universe. So that doesn't stop them from saying silly things. Like, for example, the news critic, John Smith, a couple other people, they still to this day, after years or months of blocking them, so I can't see their comments, they still comment. But I can't see them. So does that stop them from commenting or visiting? No. What it does is keeps me from seeing them. In other words, I'm bulletproof. That's how you have to think about things in life. Well, you don't have to. That's what you can choose. So you can go by the belief system based on governments that poison your food, poison your water, poison the air, control your media, control your government, control your welfare system, your monetary system, your education system, uh, what kind of fuel you get, what kind of car you drive, what way you think, where you can go, where you can't go, what license you need. You can do all that stuff. Or you can decide, I'm going to create a better universe and not have to be in those things. One of the reasons why I'm my own boss. Well, guess what? They can't fire me. I'm not part of the system. Well, you know, everybody talks about this possible economic collapse. And again, I have haters that say, oh, it'll never happen. Well, they are going to be right. Because in their system, there's never going to be a collapse. And I'm saying there's a potential collapse, but I'll be prepared for it. Well, if people are always talking about, oh, the banks are going to take all your money, and the banks are going to do this, and the banks are going to do that. If you have a bank account... You're helping the system. You're creating the very system. So take your money out of the banks. Guess what? Banks can't take your money. Because you know how they say, oh, you got to you got to pay your taxes because otherwise government's going to come along and they're going to take the money out of your bank account. Well, guess what? If you have no money in your bank account, what are they taking? Hello, McFly. You can believe whatever you want. If you believe you have to pay taxes, well, guess what? You create that basis, and guess what? You will be in jail if you don't pay your taxes because you created the belief system, which means you will be penalized based on what others have told you if you don't pay your taxes. So if you want to pay them, go right ahead. Say, oh, you have to. Okay. I don't remember in the Bible that said God created Adam, God created Eve, and then God created the tax man so he can charge you for being here. Let's see. Who wrote that? Was that God? No, that was man. Who control, Who changed and altered the Bible throughout history? Hmm, that was the church. The very people that are teaching you. The very ones that are influencing you. If that's a belief system you want, have as much fun with it. That's why some people need to believe in Satan. Because if they believe that if they're bad, Satan will take over their lives, well, if that is the reason why they're good, well, then something good came out of that bad situation. So if you need a belief system that keeps you under control and you say, well, I can't cheat on my wife or I can't cheat on my husband or I can't murder somebody or whatever because of the fact that I will be forever in a burning pit of flames with a guy with a pitchfork. Well, if it stops you from doing it, then that's a good belief system. So go with it. I, on the other hand, don't need to believe in the devil because he's not part of my world. Doesn't mean you have to. You could sit there and judge me all you want. It's my universe. You're judging my amusement park that you're in. Make your own. Don't visit mine. If you don't like my amusement park, you don't have to come. But if you're going to spend every week paying a uh, paying the admission, and all you're going to do is complain and you're not going to enjoy the rides, that's pretty stupid, isn't it? And that's what I've learned, learned with all this. And that's why I'm talking about using the copper and everything around your head. I have videos about that, that the, the copper, you put it around your head, it actually uh, may increases your brain, your brain's capacity to work. Because, you know, this is a conductor of electricity. And last time I checked, your mind is made of electricity. So it's based on a belief system. And this is what I want to say. If you want to base it on a belief system, at least base it on your own. Because why are you letting other people influence you? Because unless you can say right now that religions are uncorruptible and they're nothing but integrity and full of honor, and the same thing goes with your government, if they're doing nothing but good, well, that's fine. Does it look like things are getting better? And the very people are the ones that are influencing you and profiting off of you. So protest all you want. Well, if you still have money in the banks... It's not going to stop anything. It's They're making money while you're sitting outside. They're laughing at you while you're sitting there thinking you're doing a noble cause. 
and you're sitting out in the rain, you're sitting out in the freezing cold, you're staying there for, for days, weeks, you haven't showered, all for what? What's, what changes come out of it? Look what happened with the, the Occupy Wall Street. That change anything other than making a bunch of people really smelly, losing a lot of weight? It gives you the illusion. That's why they say, let them march all they want as long as they pay their taxes. So in other words, what they're saying is, we're going to humor them. We're going to let them think they have the freedom. of. Oh, I'm holding up a sign and saying, hell no, I won't go and peace with this and that and the other thing. Instead of everybody just no longer participating. And that's why I've, I've done the analogy of watching a TV show. And you're watching, let's say, you're a very religious person. And all of a sudden you turn on this channel and there's nothing but murder, rape, pornography, hurting of children and animals, and you're sitting there, oh my God, this is disgusting, and that's not what I believe in, and I don't like this, and this is grotesque, but you're still watching it. And then you call in, yes, hi, um, cable company, this show that I'm watching, it's very disgusting, and I don't like it, and I think you should stop, and you know, this is unfair, and this is unjust, and it goes against everything I believe in. Oh my God, did you see that? That kid's head got cut off, and look at all that blood. I'm really mad at you. Why are you doing this? Why are you making me show it? And the guy's sitting there like, just change the effing channel. It's all about choice. If you want to sit there and complain or on the other spectrum say, oh my God, this is so depressing. I'm seeing those poor animals getting shot and kids losing their mothers. And oh, there's all this death and God, that makes me so sad. I better call somebody. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm watching this movie and it's making me cry and it's making me so upset I want to shoot myself, and I don't like this feeling. And the guy on the other end, or a girl on the other end, say, well, did you shut it off? You're like, no, I'm still watching it, but it's so sad, and it's not right. And the other person's on the other end saying, you idiot, change the channel. That's what the majority of people do in the world. They're sitting in front of that TV screen and either getting angry or sad. I'd rather watch a show that entertains me, that makes me happy. I'm not going to complain about what makes me happy, but you complaining about something you continually watch, whose fault is that? Change the channel. Shut off the TV. That's what life is all about. Instead of protesting, instead of donating to causes which don't go the way you think they do, they guilt trip you into thinking that if you give money, it's going to heal problems. Well, tell me the cure for cancer that they've had. Tell me the cure for ALS. You know the stupid, 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 stupid ice water challenge, ice bucket challenge? Where you're basically baptizing yourself with cold water. Look at me. I'm pouring water on me. I'm showing a good cause that even though I could have done it by myself without actually having to tell the whole world about it, I decide, look, I'm going to do something good, but I want you to see it's all about me. It's all about the ego. Let go of the ego. They cure ALS. That's been around since at least 1941 when that's it's Lou Gehrig's disease. They don't tell you sometimes that 22%, 7%, 40% of that money goes to research. Research, okay, we're looking into it. They never solve anything because medical field is a business. But the CEOs of the pharmaceutical companies and the medical fields, they'll sure up thank you for all that money you gave them. And they'll guilt trip you into thinking, oh, you got to do it, it's a good cause. Why? Because somebody else said it. And then you become a follower. In other words, you think, I'm being original. I'm dumping water over my head. Well, you're doing what everybody else did. They're creating the maze by changing the walls, and you think you have freedom of choice. Coke or Pepsi, Duracell or Energizer, Republican or Democrat, instead of seeing us as all interconnected humans in an ever-endless universe that is created, everything is created from this to this to this to this to the air around you is all created from the very same substance electricity vibrating at different levels, and you think you have no influence over it. Keep that belief if you want it, but don't complain about the choice you made. Which hand do you want me to punch you with? This one or this one? Well, you're making a choice, but I don't think you'll like either one. Thanks for watching, guys. If you watch this video to the end, please put down I like the Oregon pyramids you have in the background and give it a thumbs up, share it.
post it on your social network. And if you've never been a part of my Barnum Nation, I would love you here. Please hit the subscribe button because I will have numerous types of videos that talk about this stuff. And it's all about progression. It's all about understanding because knowledge is power. Ignorance is no excuse. It is a choice. Choose wisely. Do you want the blue pill or do you want the red pill? In other words, one pill is going to make you forget. One pill is going to bring you deeper down the rabbit hole. Well, guess what? It has nothing to do with the red and blue. It has to do with the simple fact of which do you choose. That's why Morpheus says, I can't show you the ma I can't tell you the matrix. I have to show you. In other words, here, take one of these. In other words, choose what you want to do, and I can show you what you want. Instead of Neo saying, I had the power to go home all along. So he put it through his consent, somebody else to show him what's inside himself. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'd love to hear your comments. Peace.